What's up guys? So I have this idea that I wanted to talk about and I have a really busy, um, oh I hate that word busy, I have, it, I have a really full schedule today. So I'm going to talk to you guys about it while I curl my hair. <laughs> going to get two things done at the same time. So happy Monday. I hope you guys are having an amazing day so far. Um, I just wanted to talk. I was actually listening to an audiobook this morning. Um, cheers. Giant cup of buttery coffee. I was actually listening to an audiobook this morning. The, what is it, The Greatest Leap or The Giant Leap or whatever it's called. Um, and it made me think about something. So right now everybody's kind of focused on... Yay, lots of people are jumping on. I was just letting you guys know, like, I'm going to be finishing up my hair and makeup while we have this conversation. So, just so you are aware. This is not a makeup tutorial. <laughs> um, anyway, so I was listening to that book, and I was thinking about the fact that, like, right now, everybody is so... Obviously, we're all super focused on the holidays, and yes, my boy, it is a big cup. I have to always usually have a big cup. Um... Everybody's focused on the holidays, we're focused on getting ready for the new year, closing up 2017, like, I mean, I know that's where my brain has been, and I have to admit, like, I was having a conversation with a friend this morning, and one of the things that's important about what you do, I think, when you're planning and you're creating and you're leveling up your business and your life, is that you have to understand and keep your eye on the prize, right? So what I mean by this is, while you're creating these plans, while you're saying, oh, I need to do this, and I need to do that, and blah, 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 you need to remember why. Like, why are you doing all of these things, right? Like, what is your purpose for these things? Like, what is your life plan, I guess you would say? It's like, so like, I always talk about it daydreaming, so I think it's really important. You guys have heard me talk about creating your own reality, and, um writing your reality every day and doing those sort of things. Well, to me, that's like what you would, you can consider it daydreaming if you want to talk about it, but keeping that fresh of mind right now as you're focusing on closing up the year and creating new plans and really just focusing on what you want your attention to be on, I think it's really important that you pay attention and remember and keep that thought really present in your mind as to like, look at this, I haven't blended my my contouring yet, that's fun, huh? You guys are probably like, what in the fuck is wrong with this girl? Anyway, um, it's just really important that you keep present of mind, like, why you're building this, like, what is your big vision? So, for example, this morning, of course, like, I have a, I've had a busy couple of weeks, I've had a lot going on, closing everything up, getting new stuff out, blah, 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 and my mind and my focus has been there. But my mind and my focus needs to be reminded daily as to why I'm building all this, right? Good morning, Emily. I'm building all of this for this lifestyle, for this, you know, <clears throat> world and this reality that I've been creating. Like, that's why I'm doing this. What if I walked around like this with one eye? Lash is done, one eyelash is not done. Just kidding. <laughs> But so I was sitting there having a conversation with a friend of mine while listening to that book and uh, realizing just how much better it makes me feel to remember why I'm doing all this. Like we were talking about properties and like homes and stuff and I was like, well yeah, my big vision is, you know, to have a house here in Missouri that's like my hub and then have a house on the beach either in like Gulf Shores or in San Diego, maybe both, and then have a cabin in the woods. Like, that's my plan. And then, you know, the whole jet with the dogs plan, and then Airbnb those when I'm not in them, so the covers are expenses, blah, blah, blah. Like, that is a big vision of mine, and that will happen, mark my words, with in the not-so-distant future. Like, I don't know when, but it's going to happen. So it's important to me to remember those things. It's important that you remember those things. Like, why are you working so hard? It needs to be, every once in a while, you need to remind yourself, like, what is that driving factor, right? Like, for me, it's that lifestyle. That's what drives me. That's what I'm creating. 
That's what I focus on. So basically, it keeps your eye on the prize. It keeps you focused in where you want to be focused in at. So it, it keeps that momentum going, per se, when you're building and hustling and working really hard and sometimes like just really fucking hard and you're like, okay, what am I doing this for? And in the moment, you know what you're doing it for. You need to pay your bills. You need to do whatever. You you know, you need to expand clients. You need to help people. But in the long end, in the long term, like what's that big vision, right? And so by keeping that, it's important that you keep that daydreaming alive because a lot of people are like, oh, that's silly. That's pointless. No, it's not because what you think and what you focus on is what you create. So you want that big vision and that's what you're working towards. You need to think about it all the time. Like, what do I need to do to create that? Who do I need to be every single day in order for this reality that I vision in my head to be my actual reality? Is this making sense, guys? Give me some some, some thumbs up if this is making sense. Um, the creativity gene that we all have, or the creativity muscle gene, whatever the hell you want to call it, that's you have to have something that's a driving force for that. Like, you need to have that momentum always built up and occasionally obviously you have your moments where your momentum isn't perfect and you're going to have your hard days <clears throat> but you need to be able to create that by yourself like if you're talking of okay cool thank you guys so much for the for the likes um so if you're thinking about the terms around like um motivation right you hear all this and I've said it before like motivation really is kind of crap in a way like of course, there's tons of it around, but if you're not creating your own momentum, if you're not being your own source of, of uh, I'm sorry, motivation, then it's not going to work. Like, you can go outside of yourself and look for some outside, like, mindset shifts and things like that, but when it all comes down to it, you guys, it really comes down to what is going on in your own head. It's all internal. It's so internal, and you have to be able to... Um, you have to be able to do that for yourself and refocus your thoughts and your desires and your momentum so that it's, so it's like, it's inspiring. You need to inspire yourself. So by me sitting there thinking, okay, I'm putting all of these new things into play that are scary and new and all of this crap. Why am I doing all of this? Right? So thinking about the future and these houses and this property and like this vision I have, that I'm working so hard to create and it's happening, happening, you know, slowly, but I don't expect it to happen all at once because when big things like that happen all at once, they don't typically stick around, right? Like it's just, it's not the way it works. Like I want it all built with a deep foundation. So it's there for life. Um, yeah, Nina, be the change. That's one of my favorite, um, sayings. I actually have a ring that I wear every single day that says that. Um, I started wearing it a couple years ago and that's, I agree 100%. You want specific things to happen in your life. Like you have to be the change there and to provide that and per make like, make that happen. So I 100% agree. Lindsay, I'm just so impressed by how you multitask while curling your hair. Well, thank you. I get these ideas. I swear to you most of the time I get so many thoughts I want to share while I'm doing this. And so a lot of times, almost every day while I'm like curling my hair and stuff, I get inspired to talk about something. So occasionally I can take a few minutes and jump on and talk to you guys while I'm doing it. So I'm like, I hope it's not, I know it's kind of weird, but oh well, whatever. <laughs> whatever. It works. So anyway, I just really wanted to tell you guys and like, um, just encourage you. Ow, that was hot encourage you to spend some time this week like while you're hustling and bustling right preparing for the holidays like you need to let yourself daydream a little remember why you're building all the things that you're building remember why you worked so hard in 2017 remember why you're setting all of these solid plans up for the new year like let yourself look at that vision of why you're doing this work like what is it that you're wanting to create because when you do that, do that and tell me you're not smiling while you're doing it. Because, I mean, I like have this grin on my face all morning while I think about that. Because while I think about it 
on a regular basis, I don't always think about it in the terms of that's why I was up late every night last week. You know, like those are the moments that like in five, ten years I can look back on and say it was worth it, right? Like it was all worth it. And, uh, and that's what I want you guys to remember and spend some time to keep keep your momentum up and keep yourself remind like rem keep reminding yourself why you're doing what you're doing because if it's heavy and it's hard and it's not ever fun you need to reevaluate that for sure like is it just because you're not allowing yourself to do that is it because you're not allowing yourself to be actually be happy or acknowledge your accomplishments or acknowledge your hard work or is it because you don't like what you're doing because that's what we always assume. Like, we automatically assume, well, I just don't like my job. Well, are you sure? Like, are you sure you don't like your job? You know, so by being a little more present in, in why you're doing what you're doing in the swing of things, it helps you really get a different perspective, which is really important. Ashley Mermaid here, Motivation on a Monday. Yeah! See, everyone's like, oh my God, how do you curl your hair every day? Dude, it took me five minutes, guys. Bam. Bam. <laughs> but that's because I do it. Like, this is not brand new hair either, though. This is, this hair's been curled a couple of times. Um, Merry Christmas to you, Roland. Thank you. I haven't seen you in quite a while. Hope you're doing well. I need to figure out my why. I'm sure that will help too. So Emily, it's a great topic. So it's funny because I have some friends of mine um, that that's like an, an ongoing joke. I don't know if any of them are on, but like Michael Todd and Mike Rudge, it's like an ongoing joke with us. We're like, do you want to talk about your why? But the reality is, is it is really important that you keep that, like why you do what you do present in your mind. But the other part I want you to know about Emily is a lot of people make it really heavy Meaning, like, it's got to be this, like, like set in stone, like, almost like the Old Testament chiseled into a freaking, you know, wooden, whatever thing. And it doesn't have to be that. And it can change. And it does change. Your why adjusts as your, as your life changes, as your focus changes. Um, sometimes it does. And... Do I think that the underlining factor of what pushes you stays the same? Usually, yeah. Um, but it shifts, you know, like, and I think that you can have a different why in every area of your life, like in your relationships. A little man back here is on the move. I just to make sure he wasn't going to get up. Mac, can you see him down there in his bed? <laughs> anyway, but so... So your business, your life, your relationships, your health, like overall, my driving factor is freedom and lifestyle. That's why I make the decisions I make. That's why I do the things I do. Um, but I've broken it down more detailed. Um, so think about that, Emily, like people for a great example is legacy. Like I always ask my clients, like why they do what they do and, and at first it's a very like an almost surface level answer right because we're like oh I do it for my family I do it for my family and I'm like okay let's get a little deeper than that because that's the answer that you think you're supposed to give me not the actual like reason you know so a lot of men especially I will say a lot of my male clients they have are they work so hard to build the worlds that they have because they want the legacy like they want this the the legacy of who they are as a human, as well as like the ability to pass down this thing they've created to their family, where their family is taken care of, and they have something they can grow off of and something they can be proud of and those types of things. So that's a driving factor. Like some people's driving factor is money, and there's nothing wrong with that. My driving factor is freedom, because I want to live a very specific lifestyle where I basically get to do whatever the fuck I want. And I never thought that was a possibility. I always thought I was crazy or wrong to think that until I started doing it, until one of my coaches gave me permission, right? <laughs> Basically, 
Um, so that's where I would start, Emily, with if I were you, is basically like, what do you want more so than why? And when you kind of think about what you want in a big picture status, it'll help you say like, but what's dry? Like, why do you want that? You know what I mean? And then you can kind of reverse engineer it from there. And I agree with what Catherine said on the fact that like, your why is fluid, like it kind of maneuvers and flows almost like, I don't know, you can say like water in a way, like a wave would through your life versus like a solid, like you must make this your why forever and you can't change it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's nonsense. Again, there are no rules to this. That's the other beauty of it. Like you are the boss of you. So while I think, yes, you should get really clear and you should, you should revisit it often because sometimes it does shift like I'll tell you what I wanted out of my personal life like relationships wise a year ago or two years ago is completely different than what I want now and that's because my whole lifestyle's changed my whole world's changed and I've been opened up to so much more opportunity and possibility right so revisiting that and recognizing that it does kind of flow and shift with your life is important but I think it will always be grounded in the principles as of to who you are as like a human. That's one of the things that I think does stand strong through all of it. Um, so that's kind of a good, a good like confidence thing or like a comfort is knowing that it still stands strong in like who you are as a person, right? Because like my freedom thing, when I explain that, people are like, oh, that's selfish. I'm like, really? Because it's actually the exact opposite of selfish. By me being able to do whatever I want whenever I want to, it allows me to serve everyone that I choose to serve, right? It allows me to be there for my friends and family. It allows me to fly across the country to help a client or see a friend, those types of things. Like, so it's actually the opposite of, of selfish, but again, but that's part of my principle, like who I am, what makes me up as a person is like this desire to help everyone, right? So I've learned how to balance that into where I'm still helping myself by creating this life that I want, which allows me to help other people. This makes sense. I love these conversations because they take such a different flow. Like it just takes their own path. It makes me happy. Chris, it's really pretty simple to me. I have developed the notion that today could be my last. I could leave this life in this moment. What am I going to do with it? I absolutely agree, Chris. Like I don't wait till tomorrow for most things. Like, do I look at the future because I believe that's a good like driving factor for me? Absolutely. But do I sit here and say, well, I can't do this today because tomorrow I need to do that. And well, I'll just, you know, focus on this tomorrow. I'll say that tomorrow. No, I can tell you that, um, you know, some of the people who are closest to me have watched me kind of grow into this person where I truly like cannot breathe if I have something to say and I don't say it. Because what if, you know, you never know. Somebody, the person you want to say it to could die tomorrow. And then what? You're going to walk around the rest of your life, like, beating yourself up because you didn't say it? Like, that's where I use that the most is in, like, expressing myself and communicating with people. Because I believe that, you know, things are put in your head for a reason and you're supposed to say them. You need to share it. Like, you need to be honest and clear. And it's helped. I mean, it's worked really well for me thus far. Thank you for that. It makes more sense. Less overwhelming. Good, Emily. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you. Yay, Catherine. Thanks. I'm glad it makes sense. Because I feel like that's a common question, Emily. I'm glad that you brought it up because everyone's like, well, I need to figure out my why. And it's a really heavy question. So it's, like, like I said, it's kind of a funny ongoing joke. We'll be like, do you want to talk about your why? But like realistically, it always comes up in conversation. Like there was a car full of us driving from phoenix to the uh grand canyon and now granted of course we, we didn't have like super heavy conversation the whole time but like the fact that we were doing that and the way we did it and we were kind of a little unplanned and we just were enjoying life and stopping when we wanted to stop and doing what we wanted to do and being silly and all that stuff like that embodied and encompassed each one of us like the why we do what we do so it was just kind of cool um because it doesn't have to be this super serious, heavy thing all the time. It should be fun. You should enjoy it. You should light up when you talk about it or think about it. So keep that in mind when you're kind of diving into it. It creates a sense of urgency for me. I have been such a lazy person and a procrastinator my whole life. I really 
seems to help overcome that. That's great, Chris. Awesome. To be really honest with you, by nature, I'm an extremely lazy person. I would much rather sit on my ass all day long and do nothing. Like, it's like a weird balance I have. Like, I have these moments where I want to do a ton of shit, but my natural instinct is to, like, watch TV all day. That's what I would prefer to do, honestly. So I've had to maneuver and, and teach myself over the years to not do that, especially when I started working from home. Because when you're home, it's easy to be lazy, right? So I had to shift things around and, uh, and kind of almost retrain myself to not be lazy um, or wait to the last minute for stuff. So I think that when you recognize that that's something, you know, that's a part of who you are as a person, there's nothing wrong with that. But recognizing it and realizing that, like, you don't want that to be, you know, how you act every day and finding out what pushes you to not do that is huge. And it's really big. Like, I've told people, when I tell people that I am naturally lazy, they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, naturally lazy and naturally messy. Like, I would prefer to just leave the shit and not deal with it. That's just how I've always been. I'm like, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. Well, I had to train myself to, like, how you do one thing is how you do all things, Right. So when I see something that needs to be put away, I put it away. When I have a dish that needs to be washed, I wash it. Like I've had to train myself to do it in that moment so that that laziness and messiness and that habit is, doesn't become a thing. So it's been, you know, it's interesting when I tell people that because they watch me on social and they see my Snapchats and they see stuff and they're like, you're busy all the time. You're running around. You're doing all these things. It's like mind blowing that you naturally just want to be lazy. And I'm like... Right? Like, talk about a lot of conditioning and training that I've had to, like, work on to fix that. So it's possible. That's why when I tell people that mindset work can truly change your life, like, it's because I've lived it. <laughs> I still, I live it every day. I work from home and it's a challenge not to be lazy. It absolutely is, Emily. I made a video years, like, a couple years ago, and you've probably seen it because you're the best, you're the best YouTube channel watcher of all time. That's called um, Put On Some Pants. And people, because people always ask me, like, well, how do I be productive or how do I feel more productive when I'm working from home? And I'm like, get up and put some freaking pants on. Like, that's the number one thing. It's really great to think, oh, I work from home. I don't have to get dressed. And you know what? And some days if you choose not to get dressed, that's your thing. But if you get up, get dressed, put pants on, put some makeup on, do your hair, you're going to be more productive. I guarantee you. Make your bed. Easy shit you learned in kindergarten. Maybe not the makeup and hair part, but the other stuff, yeah. It changes everything. It changes your mindset. It is a proven fact. There's tons of studies and statistics that'll tell you that when you are in pajamas or pantsless, there's something in your mind that goes to the part of, it's like makes you feel like you're okay to be lazy, which makes sense. If you don't have pants on, you're sitting in bed, like of course it's like relaxation time, you know? So if you get up and you get yourself presentable, that's when the creativity flows. That's when the productivity flows. That's when you're able to feel like you're like actually going to work. Like I'm not going anywhere today and I'm fully dressed. You know what I mean? I mean, I have to go to the gym later, but I don't have to have makeup on and hair done, go to the gym. But this is what I do every single day. Cause if I do not do that, I will not do shit. <laughs> it's just part of it. Uh, what is the biggest thing that has helped shift your mindset to a productive one? So routines, honestly, Chris, um, routines and like a daily plan has been what I must have. And if I do not have that, I don't get shit done basically at all. Um, I'll let everything pile up until I have to stay up till three o'clock in the morning to get it all done. If I do not have, I do not follow my routine and I do not have a list, like a planned out guide for the day. Um, and I do that like every Sunday I do a weekly, like my schedule for the week. And then each evening I look at the next day and I write out like based upon what my time schedules are, like what appointments I have and stuff like that. I'll write out how I'm going to spend my day. But every day, every morning, my morning routine is the biggest thing that shifts my mindset into productive mode. The way that I do my morning routine is like the key element. And if I do not follow it, because obviously I'm human and I don't follow it every single day. If I do not follow it, my day's off every time, 100%.
So that's my biggest thing that shifts my mindset for sure is my morning routine. So basically, um, I try to stay disconnected in the morning, like remove distractions. And I do, you know, let the dogs out, make my bed, take a shower, make my coffee, stretch, write my daily intentions, write my reality for the day, do some reading or listen to an audiobook. Like that is what I do every single morning, no matter what. And then I start my work day. But, but by doing that, I'm in control of my mindset. Like that's where the key is. I'm not having people pull my attention in 16 different directions by checking my email, responding to text messages, um, checking social media and getting in conversations with people on social media. Like when you do that, you're allowing, that's the biggest, that's the biggest factor for social. And I should do a whole other conversation about this another day. But like the way to make sure social media doesn't ruin your day or take over your life basically is by realizing that you have to be in control of who's taking your attention and where your attention and your thought process is going. So by starting your day in a different way where you're in control of your mindset, that's the biggest key factor where it's not being influenced or dragged in another direction by people. I raised four kids on my own. Good for you, Chris. That's amazing. So I can be, it can be really hard to keep a routine. How do you overcome the curveballs and stay on your routines? So I work with several, several parents um, and the biggest, so some of them, some of them wake up really freaking early before their children and get their routine in their morning routine in. Um, I mean, they're crazy and I'm not a morning person, so I will never tell someone to wake up at five, four or five o'clock in the morning. Six o'clock in the morning is my wake up time and I hate it. <laughs> not a huge fan, but so it's really what works for you. Um, but the biggest thing, Chris, for for working on curveballs and staying on routine is basically like what I said with the planning is looking at, okay, tomorrow I have four appointments, but I need to get these other five things done too. So being really, really present and aware of the time frames that you actually have is really big. So we tend to think, okay, I need to have this very strict routine and I have these hundred things to do, but in reality, you only have three hours worth of time that's free because you're at work or you have appointments or you're with the kids or whatever you're doing. So when you look at it in that fashion and you're looking at it in a really clear point where you're able to say, okay, I have this many appointments, I have an hour in between this one, and then I have two hours here and I have an hour window here, I need to get these five things done tomorrow. So then you know that you have those three pockets of time to get those five things done. Um, a lot of times when you have kids and you have the curveballs and you have this life that may not allow you to be extremely structured, like you still need some sort of a guideline, like a path to make sure you're getting the shit done. Um, so by doing that and not making it super, super structured is okay. And it usually works better for people. Um, but play with that and see what works for you. But the biggest thing is consistency. Like you need to do it every day. You need to, every night you need to sit down and maybe that's like when you put the kids to bed, right? You sit down and you reflect on your day, like what you got done, what you didn't get done. You look at the next day, what's on the agenda? What do I need to get done? And you write out a plan. Like I can show you. Here, come take a walk with me. Where's my plan? Is it in here? Yep. So I actually leave it on my nightstand. So here. This is my plan for today. So these are the things I have to get done. So that's why, that's how I do it. And I like to check things off boxes. So <laughs> I like to do the whole check mark thing. How do you keep the energy up to keep up with a day like that? Great question. Um, I didn't used to. You can ask um, some of my clients. Some of my friends that I've had for a long time, um, I didn't use to keep the energy up at all, actually, because I wasn't taking care of my body. I avoided that area. I didn't think it was that, as important as everything else. So um, let me get this back down. When I started taking care of my body and making it a priority and getting enough sleep, drinking enough water, eating well, the energy wasn't a problem anymore. I used to drink like a pot of coffee a day, literally by myself and it didn't work. 
Like I wasn't energized. It would wake me up in the morning. It makes me very happy. I'm obsessed with coffee. I think it tastes delicious, but it wasn't working. I was still exhausted. I didn't feel good ever. Um, so it was when I started making sure I was eating enough and properly and not just throwing like a handful of almonds in my mouth, right? I started doing that, started drinking more water, making sure I was getting enough sleep. And as I start, and again, these are routine stuff, right? You get this into a routine. Once you start to do that, the energy level goes up. It really does. Like people used to tell me that and I think, okay, whatever. Like that's a load of shit. But realistically it does. And a lot of people, like obviously I, I go to the gym a lot too, um, which I think really helps overall. But I know even if you don't have the opportunity to do that in your schedule, just like basically making sure you're fueling your body properly is the biggest thing when it comes to energy. Also, um, I utilize meditation in the middle of my day. Around 2 o'clock every day, I burn out. I like almost like clockwork. Like around 2 o'clock, my brain is like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And it's draining. What I do for a living is draining emotionally and mentally. Um, there's a lot of conversations that are really deep. I'm talking a lot. Like, it, it drains me. So, um, in the middle of the day, I take five minutes. I put my headphones in. I do a guided meditation. Sometimes I lay on the floor, close my eyes for five minutes. Sometimes I walk around outside. Um, but something to reset my mind. But it literally could take five minutes. Get up, take a walk, walk around the block, walk around your office, step outside, take some deep breaths. Like, utilizing those types of things... Um, are really, really helpful. People are like, oh, you're doing meditation? I'm like, yeah, you can make fun of me all you want to, but it works. <laughs> it really, really does. So learning those little like hacks that you can use um, to keep yourself focused is big. And it's just really paying attention, you know what I mean, to like what's happening in your day-to-day -day and, uh, and what works for you and what doesn't. Like I was always told you need to meditate first thing in the morning. You need to meditate first thing in the morning. Well, when I meditate first thing in the morning, I fall asleep. And that's just true. Because I am tired and want to sleep. I love I love sleeping so much. I love to sleep. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I could do it all day long. Obviously, I don't. But I could. And so I can't meditate in the morning. So I had to figure out what works for me. I do it in the afternoon. Because it helps me become present and more focused again. And it like re-energizes me. Resets my mind. Um, so just finding out what really works for you. Don't you let go of the opinions of others. Magic happens. No shit, right? I was having a conversation with a client the other day and she's like, you know, I can't stay consistent with my workouts because my mornings are so unpredictable because they're not necessarily like completely up to her control because she has two kids. She's a single mom. And I said, okay, well, who says you have to work out in the morning? Well, and I'm like, okay, now that's a stupid question. Everyone tells you you need to work out in the morning. But guess what? Everyone isn't you. Like, you can do whatever works for you. Like, I used to do the same thing for a year. I worked out every morning at 7 o'clock, and I hated it. I hated it. I was sick. I didn't feel good. Every morning I went, and I hated it. It was miserable. And it took me two hours to get my mind back to normal before I could start working again. So I would, I'm like, fuck this. Like, I don't care what all of you gurus tell me. If you tell, I don't care if you tell me I have to work out first thing in the morning. Like, if that doesn't work for me, I'm not going to do it. So I started working out in the afternoon. I go to 3 o'clock. It's perfect. It's like a great break in my day. But that's what works for me. So by finding out what works for you is, and realizing that there is no cookie cutter how to plan. Like, you have to... Do a little trial and error to find out what works for you. But it's, it's a commitment. You have to commit to doing it, to figuring it out and trying things. And be consistent with something for a little while and see if it works. And if it's not, that's okay. Adjust it. Try something else. But most people won't put the time and effort into doing that. And that's, that's where the things change. Erin, does riding a bike and walking around the block keep your energy up? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't ride a bike, um, so I don't really know about that, but like the biggest thing about it is when you get your circulation flowing, like so if you get up and take a walk around the block really quick, first of all, you're getting outside, you're getting some fresh air, which is necessary for grounding, for focus, for resetting your mind, um, and then also you take a quick walk around the block, and 
Am I saying you should go walk a mile? No, probably not. But you can go walk for five minutes or 10 minutes and you're getting your blood pumping, your circulation flowing, oxygen flowing through your whole body and it does bring your energy level up and it certainly focuses your mind again. I don't know about the whole bike riding thing. That might make you tired. I'm not a huge cardio person though, so I, do, I, don't, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a let's like lift up heavy shit and put it back down kind of person. I do very minimal cardio. But um, the walking around the block or I go like, I'll literally go out in my yard and just kind of walk around my yard several times. And that helps me just to be outside. But I love this conversation. You guys are awesome. I don't even know what time it is. Oh, shoot. So I'm going to head off in a minute. I'll, if anybody has any other questions, pop them in. I'll hang tight for just a sec. But I appreciate you guys being here. And uh, I love the questions and the fact that like the conversation can go so many different places, which is really cool. You touched on meditation, curious what your thoughts on grounding. I do that every morning. Um, I put my bare feet in the grass when I let the dogs out, um, no matter how cold it is. I do it and stand there quietly and take some deep breaths and just basically focus on like my, I feel like, so in the work that I do, it's a very interesting question, Chris. In the work that I do, it's extremely intuitive and it's very like mental. I have to be connected and very present in order for me to help my clients, for me to understand them, for me to be able to be on the ball and throw out information at them and be able to completely relate and, and give them the information they need and be a present listener in those types of things. So it's important to me that I feel grounded and centered and firmly planted, you know, and if I don't do that, I truly can tell you that I don't feel satisfied with myself when I get off of a phone call with a client with what I provided to them. Um, so yes, I put my feet in the grass, even if it's cold, and stand there, deep breaths, kind of look around, picture like roots in the ground, right, coming out of my feet sort of thing, and go on with my day. I don't make it into a huge, big, giant like ritual, which I know you can. I don't necessarily, it's just not something that I do regularly every day I have. Um, if I'm unfocused in the middle of the day and it's nice outside, especially I'll go outside with no shoes on and do that. Um, if I feel the need to, I just think you need to definitely just be really present and, and, and aware of like what's going on in your world. And I think you kind of, your body and your mind kind of tell you what you need. Basically, if you pay attention, that's the problem. Most people don't pay attention. So they run themselves into the ground because they're not listening to their own bodies. This is like, they should be teaching this shit in school to people. They'd be, the world would be a lot better, honestly. Um, kids wouldn't be 30 years old reteaching themselves basically how to uh, be in control of their lives because we are not taught that. So anyway, that's a whole other conversation for another day. But any more questions, guys, I'm going to jump off. Great questions, Chris. Thank you. Oh, you guys are awesome. If you liked this um, this audio or video or whatever, give it a thumbs up and share it with anybody who you think would be interested or think it's beneficial. I appreciate you guys. Like that's one of the things a lot of people ask. How can I? How do I support my business? My friends who have businesses online, and I'm like, every time you like something that they post, you're supporting their business. Every time you share something they post, you're supporting their business. And that's big. Um, that's the biggest thing. With like literally by hitting the like button, you're supporting someone's someone's business and someone's brand. So just remember that. Um, it's that easy, basically. If you like what you read, hit like. Like I have so many people who are like, I read everything you write. And they'll like they'll quote and reference things that I wrote a year ago. And I'm like, holy shit, like that's amazing. Thank you so much. Never one time have they liked or commented on it though. Which I get, and that's a personal preference, and that's I'm not saying everybody has to, but if you do, it's appreciated because it definitely is a, a way to support an online business big time. So anyways, guys, I'm going to jump off. I got a lot of things to go do, but I appreciate you all and I hope you have a fabulous Monday and I'll talk to you soon.